Hello, and welcome back to the Nostalgic Futurist Podcast. Today, I wanted to bring us all back in with the biggest crimes in Disneyland. Now, we're going to start with something that sounds like it's out of the Old West, but it actually happened on Main Street. Where the Plaza Inn is today, there used to be the Red Wagon Inn. This was a restaurant just like the Plaza Inn, and it was Walt's favorite. But on August 21st of 1960, one cast member decided that he was going to do more than just his job. This cast member was responsible for taking the money from the cashiers at the end of the weekend and taking it to the Bank of America building on Main Street. When he left with a bag full of money equaling about $10,000, which today would be $83,000 if you really want to get into it, he was walking down Main Street when he said a person came up behind him with a weapon and threatened his life. Of course he gave the money to the person, and that person ran off with the money, and he ran off with his life. However, when the police interviewed him a few days later, his story changed, saying that now two people approached him for the money. The police weren't convinced by his story, and eventually they found that he had hid the money in the women's club room in the Red Wagon Inn. Now, maybe if he had been a cast member in Frontierland, he maybe would have handled a bank heist better than that. Now, our next big crime was committed by the Youth International Party, known as the Yippies. I would call them hippies based on what I know of them, but they protested capitalism and the Vietnam War. They wore tie-dye and they enjoyed smoking marijuana. Now on August 6th, 1970, they decided that they were going to have a yippie takeover of Disneyland. Disneyland was sponsored by a lot of big capitalist companies like Bank of America and Monsanto, and so they represented a lot of what the yippies opposed. But Disney was ready for them. They brought in riot police. Every cast member who worked at Disneyland at the time was called in. There were all hands on deck and they were ready. However, when the morning of August 6th came, there weren't that many yippies trying to get into the park. They were let in peacefully and they mainly just made slight comments to things, chanted and kind of marched around wreaking small bits of havoc throughout the day. But it all changed that night. In the evening, they took over Tom Sawyer Island, which was one of their main agendas for the day. They raised their flag and shouted things like, Liberate Minnie Mouse. The cast members stopped anyone else from going out to Tom Sawyer Island, and eventually the Yippies kind of got tired of just being out there alone and not making a ruckus. And this is when everything got bad. Disneyland decided to close the park early due to how out of control the Yippies were getting. This was only the second time the park had ever closed early, the first time being when John F. Kennedy was assassinated. As they were being escorted out, they destroyed flower beds and attacked the cast members and police. They shouted to free Manson and to legalize marijuana as they went. Now, Disneyland and the Disney Company have been sued a lot. When you have a theme park, of course you're going to get sued. People get injured, people die, things happen. Now, there was one man who decided he was going to take advantage of the system. On April 17th, 1994, a man decided to let himself out of a Skyway bucket above the Alice in Wonderland ride, and he landed in a tree 20 feet below. He would have died if he had fallen anywhere else on the track, but he conveniently fell into that tree. Now, there were eyewitnesses who said that they saw the man trying to let himself out of the Skyway bucket. But for two and a half years, he maintained his story that he had fallen out because the ride was faulty. However, right before the trial happened, he dropped his entire case. But the ride closed soon after, and many people thought it was due to this case, which was indeed not real. Now, the next two I'm going to talk about are about discrimination. And unfortunately, the Disney company has been embroiled in it for a while. Now, back in the 1980s, there were a lot of people who would go to Disneyland to dance. And two young men decided they were going to dance with each other. They were boyfriends, and so they had every right to. But they were kicked out of Disneyland because Disneyland did not allow same-sex dancing. They argued that it would provoke weird sexualness with the men coming on to a bunch of girls dancing together so they had to take it out of the park well these two young men sued disney for kicking them out 
Now, the first court ruling ruled with Disney and said that Disney as a private company had every right to kick them out. However, it went to a different court in 1984, and this court ruled that these two young men were allowed to dance with each other at Disneyland. But only these two men. Not any other same-sex couples, just these two. However, very quickly, Disney changed their rule on same-sex couples with the creation of Videopolis, a big dance area created by Michael Eisner for the park to try and bring in more teenagers. Now, this next one is very recent. One of the cast members from Frozen, live at the Hyperion in DCA, came forward and said that he had been discriminated against based on race while he was there playing Hans. Based on his account, he said that the original casting director for the show was very inclusive and forward-thinking to allow everyone an equal opportunity to play Disney characters. Characters who are created with the idea that everyone's dreams come true and everyone is equal in that. Now, a new casting director came in during his time as a cast member, and this casting director was not so great. They said his acting was too urban and that his costume didn't fit him right. However, all the other Hans did not get the same notes, and they received very different treatment than him. I personally was so appalled to hear this story. Disney is supposed to be a sanctuary, a place where people get to finally feel like they belong. And it broke my heart to hear that when he had complained to Disney, they did nothing. They pretended that they didn't even hear his case. And when he asked for fellow cast members to stand up for him, they said nothing because they feared losing their own jobs. This makes me so not want to work for Disney right now. If Disney can't treat everyone the same, and I mean everyone the same in a good way, then what are you doing? You're supposed to be the place where dreams come true. I mean, Walt said it himself. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Disney and Disneyland have unfortunately been plagued by racism throughout its entire career. And while we can't change the past, it's time to change for the future. It's time to start having the discussion about the theming of Splash Mountain. And it's time to start having discussions about why characters like Aladdin or Moana are often played by people who aren't representative of who those characters are or where they are from. And it's time to start talking about how fun it can be to have Anna played by any actress who is good at playing Anna, no matter her skin color, no matter her size, no matter who she is. We are so fortunate to live in a society that is slowly but surely realizing that difference and diversity is what makes life colorful, beautiful, and different. And that that's good. Change is good. I love Disneyland, and I know eventually they're going to do the right thing. In the meantime, let's not forget that we have a voice. Let's tell Disney what we would like to see changed. Offer up your ideas. You're important to Disney because you're the one who pays their bills. So let's remember that we can make positive change and that together we can make sure that Black Lives Matter. Thank you all for listening and I'll see you next week.